Raj P. Port says, welcome to our Health and Healing Week. 2020 has been a year of triumph that we have all struggled with to overcome. This year, 2020, we says, welcome to Party with the Purpose, the Masquerade. We will present to you seminars such as physical health, emotional health, and domestic abuse. Sit back, relax, and quarantine with the purpose with us. Let's rise, treat us. What is the current condition of your financial health? 2020 has been a year like no other. COVID has caused many problems, but it also has provided many opportunities. Today is your day to figure out what is the current condition of your financial health going into 2021. So how do you determine your financial health? What are some things that you can look at in order to determine how financially healthy you are? First and foremost, Let's start with employment. Financial health must start with monies that are coming in. If you were employed in 2020 and you've currently have lost your job due to COVID, there's some options for you. First and foremost, let's start off with trying to learn a different skill set. Every university in our community is looking for students to go back to school in order to better their education. Not only can you go back to school, there are certain schools out there where you can go back to school with no money out of your pocket. What do I mean by no money? You can qualify for financial aid. I'm not talking about student loans. I'm talking about grants that you do not have to pay back. Many community colleges, such as Southern University of Shreveport or even Bolger Parish Community College, the cost of tuition is so low that majority of the students who qualify for full pay will have enough money in order to cover their tuition and their books without having to take out a loan. So if you're currently not employed, going back to college and obtaining more education is a good way to start off your 2021 year. You can go on to the FAFSA website and complete your free application for federal student aid right now and apply for those colleges and receive those grants in order to further your education. Those who are working, in order to determine your financial health, take a look at your budget. I always say this, I know exactly what you love by what you spend your money on. So when you go home tonight, pull up your bank statements and see where you're spending your money. Not only see where you're spending your money, start calculating. See where you can save. See how many impulse decisions that we make. When you walk into Walmart and you buy a candy bar and that candy bar is a dollar, did you have to buy that candy bar? Because you have went to Sam's and bought a whole pack and saved. So we want to start looking at those impulse decisions that we're making and see where our money is going. The other rule is, when you do have an impulse, when you feel like you really, really need something, just wait three or four days to determine if you truly, truly need that item. Budgeting is the key in order to having a healthy, healthy, healthy financial lifestyle. What you don't want is to continue to buy things today and end up paying for them later because that's going to cause problems in your marriage. That's going to cause problems with your kids. Just because you have these items does not make you happy. So the key is trying to be happy. So let's start off with mass locking hierarchy of needs. It's shaped like a pyramid. So at the bottom is what you want to list all those things that are essential to your life. Those things that are most, most, most important. So those things, number one, should be food and shelter. Do you have food? Do you have shelter? Technically, if you have those things, I promise you, you have everything you need to be happy. In the spirit of Christmas, don't overspend for Christmas. Please do not overspend for Christmas. Here's some tips to save while you're trying to determine who to purchase items for Christmas. Write it down. The amount of money you're spending is not going to make that person happy. Let's go a little bit deeper. Buy gifts based on what you think they need. Make it personal. You know, cut up some pictures. Um, put together a, uh, a collage. 
Make those gifts personal and I promise you, you're going to get better results than just spending a lot of money um, on gifts that you're going to regret or feel upset that you don't have those funds when it comes January or February. So if you have a job, let's start looking at that budget and let's see what we can cut in order to save. So typically, you only want to live off of 70% of what you make. You want to probably save 10%. You want to take another 10% and use for some type of charitable giving, um, giving back to God, giving back to your church. But you want 10% that you feel like you can just do something positive with. Um, the other 10% you want to look at some type of investment. Um, that is my model, my 70-30 model. I will say this, and, and, and hear me clearly, you cannot start to invest if you're currently in debt. You cannot start to save if you're currently in debt. Because the debt that you're in comes with an interest rate. And that interest rate is going to be, um, is going to hurt you more than the amount of money you're trying to save. So the first thing before you try to save, and a lot of people make this mistake, let's focus on getting out of debt. So how do we get out of debt? Let's find one debt first. And all debts are not created equal. So you're looking for the debt that carries the highest interest rate. And put all of your extra money towards reducing and getting that debt paid off. Once that debt is paid off, then you move on to the next debt and you keep repeating the cycle. Again, do not try to save money when you're currently in debt. How many people have went into their savings account every time they try to save simply because they did not have enough money? You're going to keep repeating that cycle. Same thing. Do you have enough money? Everybody hates bills. But watch this. You don't have one bill that you didn't sign up for. You don't have one bill that you did not agree to. So those bills you have are your bills that you said yes to. So it's time to start saying no. So look at those bills, those recurring bills, those bills that you can't pay off. They're going to come each and every month. Your direct TV bill, your Comcast bill, your cell phone bills. Um, where can you start cutting? Where can you start reducing? Do you have to have them? If you say you work all the time, then why do you need cable? Why can't you stream? Why can't you get Netflix? Um, why can't you get uh, Disney HD? Um, your kids. If your kids are always on the phone, are they really watching TV? So why do you have three or four boxes in your house? So start thinking about that. Start thinking about your lifestyle. Now, everybody's lifestyle is different. If you love eating out, then you may not be the person that can travel. You can't always have everything that you want. But remember, we're starting off with the triangle. The most important needs at the bottom, and then as we build up to what we call our wants. So start off with your needs, and then we'll build up to your wants. So when you take your budget, you're taking all the income that you're coming in, and then you're focusing on the 70%. Do you have enough money to current to pay the current bills that you have obligated to pay that's the first goal if you do then whatever is left over let's make a plan for that money let's not leave it to chance you need to have a plan for every single penny that's coming into your household that is how you become successful that is how you become happy with your finances it should not be left up to chance. Once we look at your budget, a lot of people talk about credit. Everybody wants to improve credit. Yes, I know a lot about credit. I call myself a credit expert. However, credit is only needed to be used. What is the purpose of having an 800 credit score if you're not going to borrow money? Let me say that again. Having good credit the purpose of credit is to go into debt, period. If you're not trying to go into debt, it doesn't matter what your credit score is. So if you're looking to improve your credit score, you're saying, hey, 
I'm trying to go into debt. I'm trying to buy a house. That's a debt. I'm trying to buy a car. That's a debt. I'm trying to buy furniture. That is a debt. I don't recommend anybody trying to go into debt if you're already struggling where you are. So the first goal is to let's get out of struggle, struggleville. Let's focus on reducing the current debt and getting out of struggleville. Once we out of struggleville, yes, there are some very good debts you can get into. Home ownership. Home ownership is the fastest way you can create wealth for yourself. It's the fastest way that you can pass on wealth to your kids. When you become a homeowner, you're paying off something that eventually is going to be yours. Once it's yours, you can leave it to your kids in the will. You can keep it in the family. Your kids are now starting off in a position where you didn't start off yourself. So we definitely want any renters to become homeowners because that is the goal in order to become owning something that's eventually going to be yours. Even business owners. It's the same mindset. If you don't own the place where your business is running out of, then you want to work towards that. You want to buy property, buy buildings that can be yours, that you can pass on and on and on and on. A name without real estate attached to it, it's nothing. It's nothing. You can pass on a name, but you want real estate because land will always be there. A building can be turned down and a new building can be built on top of that same existing land. That's the type of legacy that you want to live. That's the type of legacy that you want to build so you can give back to your kids. So, credit. What's the secret to credit? It's simple. Pay your bills on time. Pay your bills on time. That is the secret to credit. Anytime you get ready to borrow new money, all they're doing is looking at your credit report, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And those entities are telling the world what type of person you are. You know what type of person you are, but now you have three reports that say, I'm this type of person. I'm going to borrow money from you, and I'm never going to pay you back. I'm going to borrow money from you, I'm going to pay you back. 30 days late, 90 days late, 180 days late. And I know there are reasons why these things happen. So here's, again, going back to your financial health in the spirit of COVID. If you lost your job, if there's something going on, don't ignore your bill collectors. Don't just tear up or throw those bills in the garbage. Communicate with them. Let them know what's going on. Think about it like this. What if I owed you money? Wouldn't you want me to talk to you if I couldn't pay you back when I said? Wouldn't you want me to answer your phone call? Would you want me to at least give you the courtesy of telling you this is what's going on and here's why I can't pay you back? And if I did that and I eventually paid you back, how likely would you loan me money in the future? Your current bill collectors, they want to hear from you. They want to hear the same thing. Keep in mind, these bills are the ones you signed up for. These are the ones that you said you wanted. You couldn't wait. It was Christmas time. You got that credit card and you bought that PS5 and you charged it. But then when February came and that bill was due, now you didn't want to pay it. Now you don't know who the bill collector is. Now you want to come through credit repair and say, that wasn't my card. Let me dispute that item. I don't know who that call was for. So let's not do that this Christmas. Let's not take on more than what we can handle because January, February, and March is right around the corner. Let's not be spending our tax refund check today. No, let's not do that. Let's make better decisions today. Why? Because your family needs you to. If you're the head of your household, you have people that's dependent upon you to make these finance decisions. You're going to hear about how you can um, check your, your, your personal health and, and um, making sure that you're a healthy person. But you can be the healthiest person and drowning in debt, which can also make you become unhealthy. It goes to your mental sanity. 
we say a prayer that says, you know, this should be like, you know, heaven on earth. That means you should be happy. You should be happy. Going into debt, spending money that you don't have should not make you happy. So let's not do that this Christmas. I promise you, your family will understand. I promise you, when you become more financially healthy, it will show. You'll have more time at home. Uh, your kids will be happier. You'll be happy. You'll have a happy marriage. That is the goal. So we talked about job. We talked about budgeting. And we're going to talk about some credit techniques. So you can get a free copy of your credit report every year from uh, annualcreditreport.com. I recommend you signing up for Identity IQ. It will allow you to get all three of your reports and pull all three of your scores. Once you have all three of your reports and all three of your scores, just take a look at it. If there are some inconsistencies, if there's some things that are wrong on it, then yes, dispute those items. Get those items off your account, but let's start cleaning up your credit because credit is critical to getting into good financial debt. But that should be third. Number one should be developing a skill set, getting a job you love. That is critical, a job you love. So how do you know if you have a job you love? Look at the thing that you love to do so much, you'll do it for free. There's something you love to do, you'll do it simply for free. Then all you have to do is find somebody to pay you to do that. And that's your job. Or look at the thing that you feel like you just can't stand. You don't understand why the world is this way and you just it just it just gets under your skin. That may be something that you're commissioned to change. So if you don't like it, then develop a business or a company that's job is to change that thing that you don't like. And then you're gonna get paid to do it as well. That is how you will never work again if you find something that you love to do it won't seem like work that's your job that's your skill set that is how you earn money and only you can do that specific thing that's why you're here that's why you was created that's why we all got different fingerprints we all got different dna's because we are unique so i truly believe that each person has a purpose what is yours if you don't fulfill your purpose, nobody else can. Nobody can beat you being you. So figure out what your purpose is and you'll never work a day in your life. You're simply going to get paid just to be you. Now, now that we got money coming in, then spend it wisely. You know, spend it wisely. Let's not try to keep up with the Joneses. Let's not try to keep up with the Jacksons. Spend it wisely. Say yes to the things you want. No to the things you want. And then when somebody asks you, how is life? That's based on you. That's based on the number of yeses you said. That's based on the number of no's you've given out. That's your decision. Only you are in control of those decisions. As we transition from budgeting, now credit. Good credit allows you to, to pay less for things that other people are paying more for. Let me say that again. Good credit allows you to pay less for things that other people are paying more for. You have people right now driving Lexuses for less than what people are driving Hyundai's for. Only because of credit score. It's not because of where you work. It's not because of what you look like. It's because on a person with bad credit, they're charging more interest rate because they feel like at some point they're not going to pay. So they're charging them a lot more to make sure that they're recouping the money that they're loaning against for that car. Person with A1 credit, they say, hey, we know you're gonna pay your bills on time. So that person is pretty much just paying for the car with little to no interest. That is the difference. So good credit allows you to afford more things because your interest rate becomes way down. See, when we talk about interest rate, most people think that's a bad thing. Ooh, I hate interest because we're used to paying it. But when you start learning these tips to financial health, when you start improving your financial health, in another segment, I'm gonna show you how you can get paid 
on loaning your money out and you can get paid back your money plus interest. Now interest doesn't become a bad thing. Interest is a good thing because now you're such an, an you have such a good financial healthy situation, you have enough money to where you can loan it out into the global economy and then get paid back your money plus interest. And so now your money is working for you. So now you have your job making money. Now you found a way to make your money make money for you. And now you what you call you're on the road to financial security, financial freedom. So right now we're talking about financial health, but financial health road leads to financial freedom, which allows you to be at home making money, which you can now spend more time with your kids. So I appreciate your time. Apply those tips and have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yes. Quick question for you. For those that have bad credit, uh -huh. 300, I know you said it's simple just to simple pay your bills on time, but how do they build their credit up? Is there a quick way to do that or is it just a, a process? So um, everything is the process. So if you currently do have bad credit, again, let's start by pulling the copy of your credit report. That's what I would do if I'm trying to advise you and I will look to see what's on your credit report and then we'll start step by step to getting those things cleaned up. Um, there are laws that protect you. Um, those same laws that protect you, we allow, we use those laws to, um, to start cleaning up your report. Um, now, if you, uh, your credit report is composed of pretty much three things. Um, bad things, good things, or you don't have any credit at all. So for those that have bad things on your, on your report, the goal is to get those things um, deleted and removed. Um, if you can get it removed completely from your credit report, you're gonna gain the most amount of points. A lot of times people feel like, well, if I just settle with them, that'll be good enough. Not in many cases, because if you settle with them, it's still gonna show up. Think about uh, your report card. Um, it's still gonna show up that you had a F at midterms. Even though you may end up passing the class, that thing is still going to show up. So if you plan on settling with them, never settle with any company that does not want to remove that item from your credit report. So anytime you try to settle, make sure that you get the item removed. That's how you're going to get the most amount of points. Um, so for those who don't have credit at all, who are trying to establish credit, the best way to establish credit is to get a secure credit card. Another way for um, my, my younger generation, um, get added to one of your parents' credit cards that have been having a credit card for a while. Now, be careful, um, and parents, I'm talking to you now, make sure that you're doing right by that credit card because it's a two-way street. When you add your son or daughter to your credit card, they're going to in inherit that credit history from that card. So if you're doing good, they're going to inherit good credit. If you're doing bad, they're going to inherit bad credit. But they can be added to your credit card before they even turn 18. By the time your son or daughter turns 18, they can have 800 credit score um, by adding them to the things that you have right now. Hello, and thank you so much for uh, attending our Health and Healing Week. Uh, Rise Shreveport is a nonprofit organization in Shreveport, Louisiana, and overall we deal with the holistic approach of the community. RISE stands for Resilient Individuals Striving for Excellence. Long story short, we want to help educate the community with ways to bounce back. Uh, our, five, our five components are physical health, mental health, emotional health, financial health, and spiritual health. 2020 has been a year like no other. We want to give you some tips on how to bounce back into 2021 and to know that things are possible. We thank you for attending. Enjoy your holiday. Uh, for more information, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, visit our website at www.rideshreeport.com. And remember, let's rise Shreeport.